to our celebration of the Eucharist in this Easter season now and uh, what a time to be uh, celebrating and proclaiming the resurrection in a time uh, we continue to make our way through uh, a time that calls forth uh, so much of our need to persevere and uh, keep on breaking through into new ways of living and new ways of supporting one another in our local community and families and our wider world. We hear today of uh, Jesus emerging and breaking through into a locked place to bring that new life. And before us in our um, baptismal font, we have growing from it a, a very tenacious creeper that comes from my garden. And uh, I keep on chopping it back, but it keeps on growing through the cracks and keeps on persevering. And uh, an image of the power of the, the heart of our God that keeps on growing in us and persevering with us at this time. And so let us um, renew our faith in the power of that God's heart that broke through suffering and death as we light our Easter candle. And so let us continue to celebrate our Mass trusting it in the power of our God's heart, breaking through and growing in and through us to bring new life to our world. As we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you all. Let us come before the mercy of God that keeps us trusting in a God that wants to break through and bring new freedom to our hearts in locked places. Lord Jesus, you are risen and growing in our hearts always to persevere with us. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you teach us today to share in common our resources to bring new life and protect life. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
And Lord Jesus, you come always to hold all our world in the resurrection, breaking through the cross and bringing new healing. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on each one of us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to life everlasting. Well, let us pray. and Let's pray that we may allow that risen Christ to enter our own locked hearts and locked places in our world where hope continues sometimes to fade, but be new signs of life to renew and uh, bring new healing. And so, ever faithful and loving God, as you gather us this Sunday, continue to rise in our hearts, continue to come into those places that are locked in fear, Release new energies in our hearts to love those around us and to bring new confidence as we battle the coronavirus together, knowing that you never abandon us. And together we ask this through Christ our Lord. reading, a reading from the letter, the Act of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves 
according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in the house for the breaking of the bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by many. Day by day, the Lord added to the community those destined to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is in great mercy has given us a new birth as his Son, by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoiled or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's powers will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith has been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible even though it is beats testing by fire, and then you will have praise and glory and honor. You did not see him, yet you loved him. You still, without seeing him, you are already filled with joy, so glorious they cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end of which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We welcome the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the people. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, replied my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they're not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we have images in our readings to this morning that uh, remind us uh, and enflesh uh, the reality we're living through at this time. I'm sure we can all uh, relate to that image of the disciples uh, huddled together and we're literally uh, asked to huddle, not to go out of our houses too much. And all the strange movement from the, our familiar being in control ways, now uh, living with uncertainty in so much of our life and uh, that sense of fear and uh, the painful loss of, uh, uh, of many things in our lifestyle and then the painful loss of uh, countless innocent people in our world throughout all the various countries of our world uh, through the coronavirus. And it's in this place uh, that we're called, as the early church we're called, to uh, meet the power of God's heart in the risen Christ who breaks through the closed room 
And when we're in fear and in pain in our hearts, it can be a very closed room, a very narrow place. And we need to have our hearts opened up. And the risen Christ, when he reveals his heart, he says to his disciples, peace be with you, is his first greeting. And the word peace is not just the absence of conflict. It is all uh, the creative energies that brings new life and restores life to, to people in our world. Just this morning when I was uh, taking a little bit of a walk from my own huddled place, I am um, passing a cafe and uh, the words uh, on the table that uh, couldn't be uh, welcoming people around it were, don't forget, you are loved. And I thought that was just a lovely, uh, simple message to be reminded of. Uh, an example of the risen Christ uh, saying, peace, you know, uh, realise the power of recognising how first you are loved, no matter what's going on. And then a few minutes later along the footpath, I bumped into one of the men who was coming up to the mission, our mission that serves a, a meal uh, each day faithfully, every day of uh, the year, our Sacred Heart Mission here in St Kilda. And he just said, great to see you, Father. And his face lit up and he said, well, I really miss the social aspect of the mission. I can only come for a takeaway at the moment, but I look forward to when we can gather again. And I thought, yes, uh, the power of new energy coming and in the moment, just sharing that moment was sort of unlocking both of our hearts in the present. And so when we're called to honour the power of our God in this Easter season to break through the locked doors of fear in our own hearts, the locked doors of just worrying too much about our personal security at the cost of others around us. We hear in our first reading that the early Christians were known for the way that they shared their resources in a way that united them and brought hope to the wider world. They shared everything in common. And uh, our call as a parish community online, uh, we're looking for ways of sharing life uh, in, uh, with discussion groups, with faith sharing groups, um, with uh, ways of uh, making uh, life emerge, even though that we can't gather as physically we'd like to be together. To hold this time in common, a solidarity of heart, just the other day I was reading uh, from the Tablet Editorial, an English magazine on church affairs. Life must go on and lives must be saved. From this enormous demonstration of solidarity, a new world order could be born, built on the principle that all are responsible for all. That has to remain our vision of a better future. And so when the risen Christ comes, he comes with that desire for that better future and willing to pay the cost to bring that future about as he shows Thomas his wounds that he's endured for the sake of embracing not just a particular race or a particular class of people, but his hands stretched out on the cross for all people. And as Jesus dies and reveals the resurrection, he reveals a hope, a hope that is not just optimistic thinking, somehow there'll be a better future,
but a hope that links him to the power of God's love. As I began this homily around that phrase, don't forget you're loved. Don't forget you are being held in the midst of the vulnerability of this time by a God who has given his love fully through the heart of Jesus and endured the uncertainty, the, the suffering and the pain in order to bring life and healing and hope. And so let us be bearers of that being responsible for each other to bring about that new future. That in years to come, people may be able to look back on this time and see that followers of Jesus were known for the way that they lived the power of bringing life to others in a time when people felt life draining from them. I think the end of our gospel sums it up. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but these are not recorded in this book. These are recorded that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life through his name. Yes, in these days, may we see the signs of the risen Christ that will be recorded in the history of our lives, looking back on this time, that it was a time when people truly shared their hope and allowed Jesus to come into the locked room. Well, let us now, from wherever we are, continue to renew our hearts in our baptism and uh, drawing back that image once again uh, of the tenacious creeper that keeps on growing out. May our baptismal renewal keep us growing in the power of that risen Christ at this time. And our response is, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, let us continue to trust our need to the risen Christ as we bring our special prayers. For Pope Francis, may his voice echo around the world, carrying a message of hope in the risen Lord, of freedom from war and poverty, of love for family, neighbours and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of faith, may we, like the apostles, believe in Jesus, even without seeing him, sharing all that we have with those in greater need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our national and state leaders, 
making decisions at this time of the pandemic that will shape the health and well-being of our country for years to come. May they be guided by God's deep compassion for the weak, the poor and the marginalized. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in our parish who face illness, vulnerability and adversity, may they be touched by God's healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our family, friends, and all members of our parish who have died, remembering especially Robert Everingham from our mission community, may they enjoy God's favour in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's allow any other prayer that, to come to our hearts and be united with those prayed. And so ever faithful and loving God, continue to reveal the power of your heart to us, coming to unlock our hearts with new energy to bring hope and healing to our world. And together we ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that our self-giving over with these gifts of bread and wine may be truly acceptable to our God. And so, dear God, as we live into our journey of life in our homes and in this world at this most vulnerable time, Draw us to your holy table and raise our hearts to new life. And together we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in these days, in this Easter season, above all, when we celebrate Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By dying, He has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, full of paschal joy, we announce the power of your faithful heart as we join with all the angels and all the saints as we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, on our offerings and pour out upon them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though once we were lost and could not fo find our way to you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, was handed over to death and nailed to a cross for our sake. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself, by the blood that he to be shed on the cross, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the cup to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Well, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. As we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection and look forward to his coming again. We offer you who are faithful and merciful, O God, the sacrificial victim that reconciles to you the human race. Look, most compassionate Father, on the on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of the one bread and the one cup, that we may be gathered into the one body of Christ that heals all division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Archbishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until we stand fully before you to share the life of the saints together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse Joseph and all the apostles together with all our deceased brothers and sisters whom we commend to your mercy and love. Then, freed from all death-dealing forces and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. <laughs> be up standing as we may be standing in our lounge rooms or wherever we are participating in this Eucharist. Let's open our hands in that spirit as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Well, let us now pray as we pray for peace today that each one of us, wherever we are in this journey of ours, this strange and unfamiliar journey, that we can uh, be a sign of hope, where people feel that they're huddling in fear, that we can reach out and bring a new sense of life and communion at this time. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. everyone as we are living in a new way celebrating our masses the call to make a spiritual communion and I'm drawn to our present Pope's wonderful phrase about living Holy Week creativity of love can overcome isolation and spiritual communion is about having a creative heart out of love, to be in union with your familiar parishioners and your desire to be receiving Jesus as you usually receive Jesus in the Eucharist. The call is to use our imagination directed in faith, to imagine, you know, I, my desire is to be there as I usually am on a Sunday and let the creativity of love overcome the isolation.
notices from the parish. Thank you everyone for their feedback on our Easter tri Tridium service. We went from having just a few hundred views on our YouTube link on Holy Thursday to over 14,000 views for the Easter Vigil. Many left comments from all over the world, including India, United States, Ireland and Canada, and even some parishioners from Father John's days of Baronia. We encourage everyone who has the ability to check out our website to view our prayers, health and well-being information, faith formation blogs and articles, and our events and groups around our parish, which are open to people to join. Many of our groups continue to meet via Zoom. If you need assistance in getting onto our website or in using Zoom or any of the other apps or technology, we have volunteers ready to assist. You can call our parish office for further assistance. We are fortunate to have this technology to reach people and we are hoping to maximize that. One of the ideas we will be implementing in a is a question drawn from the Sunday Gospel or Father John's homily, which we'll put in the chat room in our websites and encourage all to leave comments and reflections. We will also soon launch our leisure activities, such as Zoom Grand Quiz, a sing-along for musicians from both of our churches, and many other ideas which seek to connect us while in isolation. A social committee is preparing a survey to see how people use technology, if they need help in doing so, and if they are generally needed other assistance. If you are aware of any neighbors or parishioners who is not making any social connection and could do with a telephone buddy or simply a call from one of our pastoral team, please let us know via the website or the parish office. Thank you to all who continue uh, offering through our website, Direct Debit, or Tightly app, once again. Call the office if you need any assistance in this area. Finally, thank you to all the pre-production, recording, and post-production teams who assist in putting together our masses. Thank you. Yes, it's a wonderful gift uh, being able to continue to reach out uh, and minister through this technology. And as uh, Carlo mentioned about uh, a question linking our gospel and homily, maybe we could get on to our chat room on our website and respond to the question, what are the signs you see of people unlocking people's hearts at this time that are fearful and hesitant and freeing them? Just as I was walking and saw that uh, message at the coffee shop, don't forget you are loved. And so let us pray. And so ever faithful and loving God, we thank you for gathering us to celebrate this Eucharist. Continue to renew our energies this week and always, that we are bearers of your peace to those suffering behind locked doors. And together we ask this through Christ our Lord. And from wherever you are, let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing and our response is Amen. Through the resurrection of his Son, God has redeemed you and made you his children. May he bless you with joy. Amen. The Redeemer has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit his everlasting life. By faith you rose with him in baptism. May your lives be holy so that you will be united with him forever. Amen. And may almighty God bless each one of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Well, let us go in peace to be bearers of the risen Christ, bringing peace to our world. Alleluia, alleluia.